Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. At the end of the last one, I said that I'd be working on making ships sinkable over the next two weeks, and that was the plan. However, that plan changed when I decided to take a closer look at something I've been hearing about for a while, Unity's new data-oriented technology stack, also known as DOTS. After exploring that a bit, I took a deeper dive into proper server architecture, so this video is once again more on the technical side. Over the weekend, I was able to sort out the issue I was having last week with the clients and servers loops falling out of sync. Today I want to work out the rest of the kinks in the system and apply the smoothing effect to ships and cannonballs, as it currently only affects players. It's 9.40pm now, and although I managed to take care of the few small issues with the player movement smoothing, once I adapted it to work with other objects, it created a whole new wave of problems. It's been very demotivating, and I procrastinated a dreadful amount, which I'm really not proud of. I'm currently stuck on an issue that seems to defy logic, so I think I'm going to get some sleep and try and work it out tomorrow. This morning I managed to solve yesterday's problem. I'm not even sure what I was thinking, because what I was doing was so obviously wrong. The server informs clients about players' rotations by sending over vector 3 which represents the direction they're facing. Upon receiving that vector, I was trying to convert it to a quaternion rotation by using Unity's quaternion.euler method when I really should have been using quaternion.lookRotation. With that out of the way, the lerping now works for rotations as well, not just positions anymore. I still need to apply it to ships and cannonballs, but that should be a breeze now. So it's shortly after 3pm now, and as you just saw, I ran into a few issues in the process, but ships and cannonballs now move nice and smoothly. All that's left is to reduce the amount of times per second that the server sends position updates. It's evening now, and I've managed to reduce the amount of data being sent to a third of what it was before. Any less than that, and the player becomes noticeably unresponsive because there's no client-side prediction. Since the rotation of the ship's wheel and cannons are sent along with the ship's position and rotation, I implemented the lerping for them as well, but then this happened. It has something to do with the local rotation, but I'm really not in the mood for dealing with this quaternion nonsense, so I'm going to revert back and deal with the choppiness for now. Recently, I've been reading and watching various articles and videos about Unity's new DOTS system. For anyone who isn't aware, DOTS stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack. It's multi-threaded, and it's basically a completely new way of programming in Unity, which allows for much, much better performance. I'm waiting for Unity 2019.3 to come out of beta, at which point I plan to switch my project to use the universal render pipeline, assuming I can get my low poly shaders working with that. If I do end up switching, that would also be a great opportunity to look into implementing dots into the project, so for the next few days I'm probably going to take some time to explore it a bit. The last few days were kind of slow. On Wednesday I just watched a few videos about dots and informed myself a little more. I also edited the first video in my networking tutorial series, which I uploaded on Saturday. On Thursday I installed the beta of Unity 2019.3 and I dove into writing shaders with the universal render pipeline. After a few hours I finished converting my low poly shader. However, I had several issues with converting my water shader, which I actually only solved this afternoon. It's evening now, but since I'm done converting my shaders, I'm going to spend the rest of the day writing some code for dots. Since I'll probably be reading through a lot of documentation over the next few days, there may not be too much interesting progress to share, but we'll see. This morning I put together a simple scene using the entity component system and jobs. Here you can see 10,000 capsules all moving independently, and I'm still getting well above 60 frames per second. If I was using game objects instead of entities, this would definitely not be achievable. However, there's an issue when I combine dots with my low poly shader. Basically, the line of code that makes objects appear faceted also breaks the lighting calculations, but only when using dots. It works totally fine with regular game objects. I've been trying to find a solution for most of today, but the lack of online resources about this stuff makes things very difficult. At this point, I still have no idea why this is happening or how it might be fixed, so I may just move on to testing other things and come back to this later. 
This morning I had a conversation about networking and multiplayer games with a few people in the official Unity Discord server, which helped me realize a few things. First, DOTS is still quite early in development. It's approaching the point where it's becoming usable, however documentation and resources are still very sparse. Things like the new Unity physics are even earlier in development, with the new netcode not even being available as a preview package yet. All of this makes it quite difficult to efficiently develop anything that uses these systems, and at this point it's probably smart to not go all in. The crazy demo videos showing massive performance gains are awesome, and it's great that Unity is working on stuff like this, but it's not quite there yet. Second, it was pointed out to me that the networking layer should be relatively separate from the simulation layer of your code, so if you do things properly, swapping out the underlying netcode shouldn't be too difficult. My server code is separated decently in this way, but there's still things I can do to improve the level of abstraction between network and gameplay. Third, I realized that if I keep my code compartmentalized enough, I can still switch to other systems at a later point in time. That will allow me to make actual progress on the game instead of spending my time scraping the internet for answers to the inevitably many issues that I'll encounter. Then I can revisit those systems when they've become easier to use. With this in mind, I need a more solid foundation to build my server code on top of. Right now, inputs are processed right when the server receives them, which is totally fine when I'm testing locally with a ping of one millisecond. However, as latencies increase, things become more unresponsive and inaccurate, which can cause a lot of problems, including giving players with fast connections an advantage. To solve these issues, most multiplayer games implement various combinations of client prediction, lag compensation, client reconciliation, and entity interpolation. Client prediction is what I had intended to implement in the last devlog before I got overwhelmed by the complexity of the entire system. Basically, it allows clients to predict the movement of entities in the world, including themselves, without confirmation from the server, which keeps gameplay smooth and responsive. Without it, players will notice a clear delay between the time they press a key and the time that the action associated with that key is executed. Lag compensation is when the server is able to compensate for varying latencies between clients. To do this, all packets need to be timestamped so the server knows when they were sent. From there, the server can use what is called rollback architecture to essentially rewind time to when the received input was sent, and it can then re-simulate the following world states up to the present based on that new input. In order for that to be possible though, the server needs to store the state of the world for the last, let's say, one second. Reconciliation is used back on the client to correct any inaccurate predictions that were made once the updated world state is received from the server. This is probably the only completely straightforward part of these kinds of systems. Finally, entity interpolation is used to smooth out any corrections that had to be made. Without interpolation, reconciling the clients and the server's states would result in objects visibly snapping to new positions. Obviously, that's not a super in-depth explanation, but I'll link to some articles below that help me understand this stuff better. Also, I'd love to get some feedback from you guys about explanations like this. Do you guys find it interesting when I go into technical details, or is it more on the boring side? Let me know what you think in the comments below. It's evening now, and for the past few hours I've been working on putting together a system that can store the world state of the server for the past half a second. I haven't gotten around to the rollback and re-simulation part, but I'm hoping to get that done tomorrow. It's currently 9.51pm, and for most of the day I've been working on structuring the server state system in a way that will allow me to use it to rewind time and re-simulate things when it receives new inputs. I had to rewrite a lot of code to make this happen, including the entire input system on both the client and the server. I think I have most of it figured out, but I'm currently dealing with a NAN explosion within the physics engine which I'm trying to track down. If you didn't know, NAN stands for not a number, and it's a value you get when you try to calculate something that isn't possible. For example, attempting to divide 0 by 0 will result in NAN. Once you have one variable that has a NAN value, things go downhill quite quickly, as any calculations using that variable will also return NAN, which results in what could be called an explosion of NAN values. I don't think I'll find the source tonight though, so I'll have to try and sort it out tomorrow. It's a little after 2 in the afternoon now, and I've spent the morning trying to find the cause of the NAN explosion, so far unsuccessfully. Hopefully I can figure it out this weekend, but I still need to edit this video, so I'm going to have to finish here for now. That's it for this devlog. If you made it to the end, smash that like button and leave me a comment down below. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, check out the Discord server. We actually just hit 100 members this week, and it's a great place to share your accomplishments, ask for help, or just hang out with some other game developers. In the next devlog, I'll try to get around to adding ship damage, so if you're interested in joining me on this journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. 
With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.